Hi, we're Emre and Maya. Welcome to the Italian Riviera, where we're going to find the best beach in Liguria. In this vlog, we'll visit six and a half beaches on the eastern part of Liguria that were recommended to us by locals. Yes, you heard right, six and a half. Half beaches are a thing indeed, you'll see. And for all you dog lovers, we're gonna throw in a bonus beach toward the end. This area is often referred to as the Riviera di Levante. You'll be close by if you're visiting the Cinque Terre or Portofino. So let's go to the beach. Our friends from Milan recommend Lerici, where we head to the Lido Beach Club. Here you'll find more Italians than international tourists. We're surprised to see such a long and relatively wide sandy beach in Liguria, because this region is typically known for its rocky beaches and the steep cliffs shooting right down to the sea. The view stretches across the turquoise Bay of Poets and we can see all the way to Puerto Venere. The water is crystal clear and the sand is super soft. It feels like walking on a cloud. And the water remains shallow quite far into the bay, ideal for resistance walking and of course little kids. We decide to pay the entrance fee for the beach club and spend the rest of the day chilling out on our lounge chairs. Later in the video, we'll tell you how Italian beach clubs work. Let's just say it can be complicated. As we head to lunch at the beachside cafe, we discover that Lirici also has a fairly large and easily accessible public beach that also has soft sand. But Lirici has even more to offer. What makes it special is the long promenade that stretches all the way from Lerici to the next village, San Terenzo, along the beach the whole way. Passeggiata is an iconic element of Italian life, and we grab a gelato and join in in the stroll in the late afternoon, feeling the dolce vita. Further north, Sestri Levante is a very traditional and old-school seaside resort where the faded elegance of a once glamorous past still oozes through the boulevards and alleys. But the town safeguards a true gem within its walls. Hiding behind the town center is the Bay of Silence, La Baia del Silencio. A beautiful crescent-shaped beach blessed with soft sand that's almost white. It's a gorgeous but narrow beach with cafes spilling into the sand. And it's very enjoyable when we come in the off-season. Another fun activity in Sestri is going on a short hike leading from the center of the village to Punta Manara, where you have a stunning view back to the Bay of Silence and Sestri Levante's colorful buildings. Next on our beach list for you is Paraji, another rare sandy beach located in a protected nature zone. Motorboats are forbidden in its intense blue-green waters, but it's a great bay to explore by kayak or sup. Paraji is also a perfect place for open water swimming. The bay is protected, the water is turquoise and clear, and droves of fish live here. In the summer, 
The sand is covered with beach clubs that charge up to 250 euros a day. Yes, like Portofino, Paraji caters to the uber rich. You'll find a sliver of public beach in between the beach clubs, but you'll need to share with a million other people. Or go to the rock shelves at the deep end, like these guys. Best is to come in the off season, when the clubs disappear completely. Paraji's little sister beach, Niaska, is hidden on the same protected bay. It's very small and it's kind of part of Paraji, which is why we only count it as half a beach. See, there are half beaches. But Niaska is entirely public. When we stop here, the restaurants and beach clubs of Paraji disappear from the view and the feeling is much more natural. Though you will hear traffic from the road to Portofino, at Niaska you can rent a sup, kayak or even try co-steering from the environmentally friendly crew at the surf shop. Camogli is one of our favorite places in all of Italy. We discovered this coastal gem decades ago thanks to a colleague from Bergamo and it's still as charming as ever. On its own, the beach in Camogli probably wouldn't make our top six and a half list. What makes it so special though are two things. Number one, the color and clarity of the water. I mean, look at these colors. Number two, the backdrop. The beach fronts one of the most beautiful fishing villages in Italy. The dramatic side drop of the mountain of Portofino National Park makes the setting of this beach really unique. And even though it's a rocky beach, the polished stones do give way to soft tiny pebbles at the shore. The depth drops steeply and there are lots of fish to admire, so bring your goggles. Our host in Bolyasco suggests a dip at Sotto la Chiesa Beach. This tiny public beach is named for its position directly below Maria Santissima Church. This is a small and stunning beach. When the sun is high and you're at the top of the stairs, the beautiful turquoise water really pops. Located at the bottom of a steep set of stairs, this hidden gem is one of our favorites. The water is so clear and warm, and the rocky outcrop stands like a little island, only a quick swim away. When you're in Bolyasco, be sure to stop by Focaccia Stea. They make the best focaccia we've tasted in all of Eastern Liguria. Nervi is a suburb of Genoa on the eastern edge of the city, but it feels more like its own village. Nervi's top attraction is its small but very charming port in the seaside promenade, the Passaggiata Anita Garibaldi. This pedestrian promenade runs along the coast right below the train tracks. There are absolutely no cars allowed, which makes for a peaceful and relaxing walk except when the high-speed train flashes by. Cafes, restaurants and beach clubs line the promenade. We decide to have lunch at Bagni Medusa, which is both a beach club and a pretty decent restaurant. Notice how there's absolutely no sand or even pebbles here. It's all rock. It's part of Italy's charm that the local people make a beach out of anything that gets you to the water's edge. But wait, there's one last beach. If you have a dog, or miss your dog, or just like dogs, have we got a beach for you. 
Bao Bao Beach in Santa Margarita is an absolute doggy dream. So let's get into Italian beach clubs, as you might want to know a little about this slice of Italian culture before choosing your favorite beach from this vlog. Finding the perfect beach isn't always as easy as looking for turquoise water in a sandy spot to put down your towel. Italy's beaches are public land, but the government sells concessions to private businesses who can charge entrance fees during the summer. In Italy, the beach club is an institution. Some locals have been going to the same beach club for generations. They enjoy the same spot, in the same chairs, under the same umbrella, summer after summer, and they know everyone who sits next to them. So are we invited too? Yes, most of the time. If spots are available, you can rent one for the day. What's available is sometimes the catch, because season holders often buy out the front and middle rows. But sometimes, even then, there's a way to score a front row seat. But at the Lido di Lerici, they don't sublet seasonal spots. Even though we arrive right at opening hour, only the last four rows in the back are available. And 90% of the front and mid row chairs sit empty all day. The club opens the season holders umbrellas every morning and saves their spot, whether they show up or not. You'll also find clubs that don't have season passes and sell all their spots on the fly. All these rules can be confusing, but worth it to enjoy a relaxing day at the beach with showers, bathrooms, a bar, a tidied up shore, and a lifeguard. Plus, this is really a unique aspect of the Italian beach culture that's simply a fun experience, at least for one day. By the way, the beach club can't stop you from going in the water in front of the club. So if you're going for a dip and don't need a place to hang out, go right ahead. So now you've got the inside scoop on beach clubs and the best beaches on the Italian Riviera. Enjoy your trip to the beach and please subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like this video.